In a world full of distractions, there is one big question on every dog owner's lips. How do I become more than just the person holding the other end of the leash? We all get dogs with a dream in mind, a vision of the future. And if right now your everyday reality isn't quite that picture you had in mind, you are in the right place. It really doesn't have to be this way. You absolutely can and will be more to your dog than just the person who gets in between them and the world. The key is you need to be more sexy. More sexy than the neighbourhood cats. More sexy than the jogger in the park. More sexy than that half-eaten hamburger they just found on the floor. And yes, even more sexy than the dog across the road. I'm Tom. And I'm Lauren. Together, Together we're, we're Absolute dogs. dogs. And you're listening to the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast, the podcast that teaches you how to overcome your dog owning struggles. And today is definitely one of those struggles that you might encounter, and that is a broken recall. Now, when we say a broken recall, what do we mean by this? Now, I have seen, and we've both seen on our um, events here, we've seen uh, dogs that are literally running away from their owner. In fact, yeah. I think you should tell the story of Fred's terrier because mm. you know what? It was, even Fred would have been giggling. I yeah. mean, how long did it take us to catch him, Oh Tom? my word, it was just impossible. To, it was almost like there was like a force field around us and the closer we got to him, the further away he went. And you might have had this kind of magnetic experience with your dog rather than where rather than your dog being attracted to you they are almost repelled but the weird thing is they're not repelled at a distance that is the whole field sometimes just at the distance where you can't actually capture yeah. them now i remember uh, a very similar instance where i was looking after a dog for somebody mm. uh, here at the center and basically the dog was in the garden I said is the dog okay off lead they said absolutely fine off lead and he was not fine off lead yeah. he was in a very small garden and I still couldn't catch him Tom and I wanted to go to bed like I literally mm. was like I need to get hold of him like I need yeah. to bring him in and he was not coming in yeah. and I have to say I don't know if the listeners are going to like this but I, I caught him with a dressing gown I had to actually throw my dressing gown on him because there was no way I, he literally was so fast yeah. and so what do you do with a broken recall because we've yeah. seen broken recalls they could be frustrating I remember I remember growing yeah. up um, and my dad, uh, Bella was our first family border collie and Bella, beautiful tricolor. She would have dad sitting down on that bench for hours because mm. you just couldn't catch her. So she'd be like, no, we're not going home yet. We're going to stay here, Alan. Yeah. Alan, don't fancy home yet. No, Alan, a bit longer. Mm. Uh, Through my ball. And then she'd bring the ball, nudge yeah. it closer. He'd go to put his hand on her. She'd dart away. It was like cat and mouse. So yeah. games that we play for a broken recall. Let's do some table tip. No, top tennis <laughs> go yeah so um first tip would be actually thinking about your your dog's recall should be instant your dog's recall should be here the recall here i come whereas what can easily happen and this is how recalls kind of get broken is that your dog starts to question they've got a question in their mind should i go to my owner should i go explore what is over here and they might start kind of x-raying your pockets and x-raying your hands thinking is this a good deal and so first tip would be actually saying okay for the next three weeks i'm gonna set it up that every time i recall my dog it's so obvious to my dog that recall is the best choice that they instantly come and for the next three weeks there is not a question in their mind the less they question the less they will question and so you can then start to make it more challenging for them you can you can change anything in three weeks and especially a broken recall okay now easy taught me our second tip and our second tip is actually middle is magic mm. for a broken recall yeah. and what I've done is I've combined middle with multi different games and it's what mm. we teach in the training academy so yeah. those of you that are training academy students you're going to love this because you've already got it and you've just got loads of videos that are going to show you this if you're not part of the training academy you should be we'll tell you about that in a minute uh, but most of all when you're working with middle and broken recalls i would do lots of middle and then throw the food out so the dog gets to carry on going through you so you don't necessarily stop them and then i would do middle and then i would do the odd collar hold mm -hmm. so i'd collar grab and feed and then i'd do middle collar grab feed let go and yeah. then i'd do some middle catching mm -hmm. and maybe some middle on the move again if i'm speaking a foreign language to you there are youtube videos mm -hmm. of ours that you 
can check this out. So the Absolute Dogs channel, yeah. please check them out. Equally, if you're part of the Training Academy, which you should be, Netflix of dog training, simple solutions, everything is in there, literally one-stop shop for every game you can possibly yeah. think of, then actually all of these are at your fingertips and they're very yeah. easily accessible. Lots of different games. So middle, middle on the move um, and making sure we've got some um, catching involved there, some collar grab. Absolutely. Now, next tip is thinking about the experience that you want to give your dog and how you can be the best deal. And often our dogs tell us, often our dogs give us give us the clues. They're, they're screaming what they want in the, maybe your dog really likes to sniff and hunt and find things in the undergrowth. Maybe your dog really likes to chase other dogs and that's when they're likely to not recall. This is yeah, it's frustrating. Yeah, it's really annoying. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It's also your dog saying, hey, this is the experience that I choose instead right now. And so what you can start to think about is how can I bake that into the recall experience? Maybe um, you when, you're, when you recall your dog from another dog or just generally, maybe you run away so that they're chasing you. Maybe if your dog's a keen undergrowth hunter, then when you recall your dog, you're gonna scatter feed in the bushes so that you actually give them access to this experience that they really want. I remember when Illy was, um, it was a, a young dog, my first standard poodle, my word, she loved kind of flapping seagulls. Like seagulls were like the best thing in the world. And she, she could never even get near the seagulls. But I used to do two things. The first thing that I used to do is I'd see how those seagulls were moving and I'd get one of those really kind of long chaser tugs and I would make it that that chaser tug was flapping around when she was coming back so that actually she's like, oh my goodness, I want to catch that seagull on a string. The second thing that I used to do is I'd call her back and then I'd say, see those seagulls, I'd point the seagulls out to her and say, go on, go try and get them. And of course, she could never get them. No seagulls were ever harmed in this and you have to do this in, in a very sensible way. Um, but the point is, is that I'm saying, hey, I spot these experiences. Let's have them together. And that really helps a broken recall. Okay, next tip to sort out that broken Dawn recall would be actually absolutely limit the rehearsal mm -hmm. and change the lifestyle a bit. Yeah. So for me, when I've seen a broken recall, lifestyle needs to change. Mm -hmm. Something needs to change because if you carry on doing what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got, which is not necessarily what you want right now, a broken recall. Mm -hmm. So rather than get this broken recall, let's mix it up. Let's change it up. And the big things for me would be absolutely zero rehearsal of what you don't want. So you're going to mm -hmm. literally, that is not to happen. Uh, so for Nifty, what does this look like? Well, actually she spends free time only in our garden and our garden's very small. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't get any loose big open time if I think there's any chance that she might not acknowledge a recall to me she's on a long line mm -hmm. but I don't want to be this like fisher like lady that's out there with a the long line and they're kind of fishing for them I, I want to know that on that long line she's still paying attention mm -hmm. so for me I'm only using that to back me up it's not to take away from my responsibility of actually I need your attention here and um, she actually hasn't been on a long line but I am prepared to use them I've got no problem with using a long line and um, I think they can be very effective used well which is basically a long um, lead which attaches to your dog's collar or harness depending on what you're doing uh, and effectively um, just doesn't allow your dog to go wrong mm -hmm. so you can interrupt them next one for me is absolutely 100% ditch the bowl so the bowl mm -hmm. is ditched and and this is a little story for you um, when I'm doing ditch the bowl I actually feel pained if I have to give them food in a bowl mm -hmm. so for me I kind of know that if I'm giving it to her I know that I've just thrown some money down the drain mm -hmm. and so I, I actually struggle to give her food in a bowl yeah. because I know that I've just wasted an amount of, of training and so I think once you really commit to ditching the bowl you will find differences in your recall because you absolutely will be pained to give them food in a bowl during that period don't, don't get me wrong my older dogs um, I'm trying to think um, now probably even Tokyo actually he doesn't earn a lot of his food at the moment because he's actually doing great at most of the things he's doing so I think you can put them on different schedules yeah. but for me a dog with a recall problem a broken recall absolute must that we sort that out and ditch the bowl is one of the ways. Yeah, absolutely. Next up would be that if you if you really want to fix your recall and, and, and fix a broken recall, you've kind of got to think, instead of sessions, you've got to think 24-7 training. And so the example might be, I might be, I don't know, chopping some veg and my dog, I'm thinking of a mundane example, and my dog, let's say Casino, is just chilling on the floor, totally happy. I might see that as an opportunity to 
give her a really fun recall cue and then dash out the kitchen and up the stairs and she's got to try and catch me. The point is, is you want to create that pairing of hear that recall word, right, where is he? I'm going to hunt him down. And you can infiltrate that into every aspect of life so that it's not just a thing on your walks. It's that their entire life is spelling out to them that, um, that this word, this thing, this sound means hunt my owner down and this is the best experience ever. Now, I think that our next tip really, it's my final tip. It literally makes a difference. And that is when you have a great recall or when you see someone else with a great recall, this is something that is worth celebrating and sharing. So my task for you and challenge for you is to share this with someone else that wants an improved recall because yeah. for me one of the things that can help to improve my recall is other dogs who behave well mm -hmm. so when I'm out on a walk I was out the other day and Nifty was less than perfect because she decided that she was off to go and see another dog and in that moment that person called their dog back close mm -hmm. and that for me made re recalling her a lot easier because their dog came back which meant she was yeah. only ever going to come back yeah. because that dog didn't want to interact and so actually repairing a broken recall for me there's a ripple effect and a sharing opportunity here where we should share with all other owners because the better behaved other dogs are and other owners are let's be honest some owners are better behaved than others mm -hmm. tom is a north no <laughs> and and so let's be honest some owners do better by their dogs and dog ownership mm -hmm. than others yeah because of that if we can ripple effect this episode and we can make sure that this is shared yeah. and anything that we can do on recall is improved, then actually we know we're in a better space generally because when I'm walking my dogs, one of my biggest pains and biggest bugbears is that actually um, another dog runs in on them because mm -hmm. actually that leaves me a bit vulnerable. In fact, yeah. only recently, Tom and I were reading uh, Kizzy and Etty, lovely mm -hmm. pony um, like bloggers on them. Um, well, they just share lovely pony journeys. Were saying how difficult it was mm -hmm. walking on beaches with their ponies when dogs would run in at them mm -hmm. and dogs would run in on the ponies. Yeah. These are things that are our responsibility as dog owners to look after, but also to share. Because mm -hmm. when we share, there is a huge um, cumulative ripple effect that is going to help you and also other dog owners worldwide. Absolutely. And so I guess the final tip, and it's one that should be music to your ears, is the off-leash freedom and a great recall starts on leash. And so don't feel like in order to work on your recall, you need to have your dog off leash. I might even add to that and say inside. Yeah. It starts inside on leash. You get to start it right now and you don't need to go to those painful, embarrassing, sometimes dangerous situations. Actually, you can work on this at home, you can work on this in your kitchen, you can work on this on leash, out and about. And what we want to see and what we get to see on a daily basis when owners implement the strategies and see this for themselves is that your dog is screaming to you, hey, I'm with you, I'm going to recall, right? And in turn, you get more confident. And in turn, you have even more amazing experiences with your dog and you open up their world more and more and you have even greater relationship because now you're, you're, you're overcoming even bigger challenges. And you move to this world of actually a, a positive spiral, like result creates momentum, creates confidence. <laughs> Feels good. Results. Feels good. And you have this amazing experience with your dog. So guys, I guess what we're saying is start where you need to start because that's exactly where you should start. And have that some, might sound vague. Have some easy wins, yeah. right? Have some easy wins. Like pat yourself on the back. Be like, yes, my dog caught this. I am a rock star. Where can you get absolute success right now? Maybe it's in your living room. Maybe it's in your garden. Maybe you're lucky and it's on leash in a new location, but start where you need to start and you will see that really you start to get momentum as those wins build. Now, that was this episode of the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. Remember, share this. It creates a ripple. We create a more informed dog community. We look after each other, which is powerful. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about something really, really important. And in the meantime, remember, stay, stay sexy. sexy. Stop right there, Game Changer. We have something very exciting to tell you about if you struggle with stressful walks right now. So pulling your dog, yanking your arm out of its socket, just basically, it's painful, right? 
Now, it's a struggle that you want to transform. You want to go from pulling on lead like a train to loose leash walking prince or princess, and we've got a solution for you. It is just £27. It's a mini course that literally is going to be your zero to hero of loose leash walking. Day by day, we're going to be showing you the games and skills and strategies that you are going to need to implement to transform your dog's leash behavior in the next two weeks. This is a complete package. You get to keep it for life, yes, for life, and it's just £27 to you. Access it anywhere, keep it for life, no equipment required, and all you've got to do is go to absolutedogs.me forward slash stop pulling, and yes, it is just £27, Game Changers.